and welcome back. I am here with Carrie Welch of Fortunate Face Minerals. Carrie, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Uh, so this is a first, and it's our hundredth, so it makes sense to do, a, you know, make it a big thing. Yay. Is we're going to be making makeup. So Fortunate Face Minerals is a local out of Westfield, right? Correct. Uh, makeup company, and Carrie makes the products herself. I so, do. I do. Tell, for the people that haven't heard of you, how did you get into this? Well, I've, I've been a makeup artist for going on 13 years now, and one of the things that we obviously are seeing as a trend is getting into more naturally sourced materials, whether it's from your hair care, skin care, particularly in the body care industry, but even in food products. See, people are really becoming very, very health conscious. They really want to pay attention. We want to get back to some of the roots of more, more natural or organic or, you know, things that are just better for you in general. Or should we say just less harmful too? That's really where I think it comes in. It's not that it's even better for you, but it's less harmful to you. There's, there's, I reduce the amount of ingredients that go in your products right off the bat too. That's good. So what made you want to start your own line? I had a call for you know a lot of people asking about the naturally based products and I wanted to offer that but I also wanted it to be photo safe and film safe and traditionally mineral cosmetics are not photo safe or not film safe they don't read very well they tend to read very greasy on camera um, and they tend to f be photo reflective a lot of the properties can be uh, can shine back and you get that gray cast we've all kind of seen it where there's been a, a wedding photo and someone in it looks like they've got that ghost face or that white face that's photo reflective makeup and most commercial makeup that you're going to go into like a you know the drugstore and buy will do that on camera and since I do use this I need to use this for professional purposes whether it's you know for a catalog shoot or on camera for a commercial um, I also market this to other makeup artists as well and they need to be able to use it mm -hmm. as well so for professional purposes but also right down to your bride a bride wants to look beautiful on their wedding day and this makeup will get will work on camera and I can guarantee it so we have a lot of we have a lot stuff of stuff in front of us. Um, explain what is in front of us right now. <laughs> FDA approved ingredients approved for cosmetic use. What I do, where I do it, everything I do with, with this is legal. It's allowed. It's FDA approved. In fact, the onus is on the business owner to understand the FDA rules. Um, not only do I understand them, but I've been um, vetted to fly out to California many, many years now to actually teach other people how to do this, including what the FDA regulations are. So I am on a first name basis with the FDA regulations. And the nice thing is, is if I have a question, I can call someone right at the FDA. I actually have a contact there. I call them, I ask them my question. But they, the regulations are very, very strict. Mm -hmm. um, and it, the onus is on the company to follow the regulations. And that's why people are finding lead in lipsticks and things. It's a breakdown in the manufacturing process and when the company is so large that they don't have a way to self-regulate that's where the breakdown comes comes in whereas the smaller companies you know we self-regulate they the FDA tells you everything down to what typeface and font size you can use on your labels what must be on the front of the label what must be on the back of the label what must be included in your may contain statement as well as in your ingredient statement and they're very very clear about how it has to be done um, but Again, it's up to you to follow yeah. those regulations. Um, and then they usually don't get involved unless there's a complaint. So, it, it, <laughs> right, right. Sometimes the smaller people are more conscientious. That's yeah. what I find. So I brought kind of the bases. I pre-weighed I pre -weighed out. This was my foundation base. Um, this would be 10, 10 grams worth in these two things. Everything is weighed to within one hundredth of a gram. I have a, this is my little teeny scale that I travel with, but I have a really bit large scientific scale that actually has the stability thing and a windscreen and everything so that it can be completely accurate and it's ca calibrated every month usually as well. And then I have my shadow bases and my cheek bases. You'll notice everything starts out white and that's so that I can start basically with a neutral palette and then start adding the color in the way that I want to. Um, and you can add everything from oxides, which are what you see here. And this, this astounds people all the time because this is actually what your foundation is made from. This is yellow iron oxide, red iron oxide, red shade, and blue, ultramarine blue. This is actually what I make a foundation with. I know, people look at those colors and they're going, you're, you're crazy, how do you do that? But it's all color theory. When you mix yellow, which is the predominant uh, pigment color in 
all skin tones. I don't care if you are the pinkest pink girl to the darkest African American girl. This is the predominant color because our pigment cells tend to be more yellow. You think melanins, things, they tend to be more yellow. Then these represent your undertones, which are veins, capillaries, blood vessels that occur under the skin. Skin is translucent. Pigment cells surround your skin cells. These shine through. There's a whole science around. There's a lot of science. I did not realize There's all a that. lot of science behind it, especially with creating your own. When you mm. work as a makeup artist, you have to really have a good concept uh, and grasp of color theory, and you have to have a good concept of bone structure and things like that. When you get into the, the manufacturing side of makeup and actually making your own, it actually adds a whole new layer. And luckily, I was a science major in college. Um, this goes right back to my organic chemistry lab, so it's kind of fun. Um, and I have a really good working knowledge knowledge of a lot of this. I won't claim to be a cosmetic chemist, but I, I do have a good working knowledge of the color theory aspect and also how makeup should perform. And that's the other aspect. There's five, there's five things um, that your makeup, you want it to do. It has to offer coverage, you know, particularly your foundations, and it can be anything from sheer to full coverage. Me, full, full coverage more, you know, your face and, and for uh, foundations and concealers, and then sheer coverage would be more like a cheek color or a bronzer because you want your skin tone to kind of glow through whatever color you're putting over the top of it. And then eyeshadows being somewhere in between. You want good coverage, but you still want to have a nice, um, glow to it and then absorbency whether it absorbs oil whether it re rejects oil um you know like where silicone base would be better for drier skins and these powders work really well for oily skins adhesion is the big one adhesion is you want your makeup to go on the biggest complaint with mineral makeup is it's sparkly it's pretty it looks great in the jar and then you go to put it on and it's like floated off your eye five minutes later that's because they don't have ingredients such as what i've what i've formulated here and this is probably this is about six different ingredients in here to create a base that has all five of these properties but in he adhesion being one of them it has to have adhesion so that's what's making it stay on your skin and one of the biggest compliments i get from women all the time is that when they put this on it stays on they don't touch it it for the rest of the day it stays on until they wash it off at the end of the day that's what you want from your makeup you don't want to have to be. That's what I want. That's what you want. Well, I know. Of course. That's what you look for every <laughs> single day. But you ask any woman and she will tell you, I don't want to be putting it back on, you know, an hour later. That's annoying. Nobody wants, nobody wants to do that. Professionals, we, we won't tolerate that. We would yeah. not, that stuff would be out of our kit as fast as, as we could throw it out. Um, bloom is the next one. Bloom is whether it's sparkly, shiny, matte, you know, what, what does it look like when it's mm. on the skin? And then the last one is slip and that's how it feels. Does it feel creamy? Even powders, if you, if you were to touch my foundation powders, you'll notice, and I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit out on this thing here, and you're gonna just rub it between your fingers like this, and you're gonna feel, even though it's a powder, you should feel that it has like kind of a creamy quality to it. Ooh, yeah. It feels nice. It's really silky. That, exactly. That's how, <laughs> that's, oh, we're gonna convert him. He's gonna start wearing makeup. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. But it feels nice between your fingers. So, and that's where the balance comes in because you want that slip, you want it to feel good, you want it to feel silky with mm. a little bit of creaminess, but it also has to have that adhesion. Um, too much adhesive stuff and you get what's called drag, whereas you put it on and any woman I've ta you, I'm talking to right now knows, you put it on and you kind of have to drag it across your face. That means it's got a lot of adhesion, but it doesn't have enough slip. And it's like you literally have to take all five of these properties and find the balance between all of the ingredients that you're putting in. That's what wow. makes for exceptional quality makeup. Okay, so, right, so we go, let's... yeah, we go on to the color, we'll go on to the colors. So these three, now instead of working from all three every time I want to make, because I have 36 colors of foundations and I'm always making more, including mm. all the way up to a really, really dark women of color foundation. And their base is different than ours too. They have to have a different base than Caucasian because they need more pigmentation, less whitening ingredients, they don't go ashy particularly on camera. But what I've done is I've created a color grinds. And I have a cool color grind and I have a warm color grind. And you can see I'm more this than I am this. The girls who have like that snow white complexion with that love, you know, white white with a little pink to their skin, they're gonna be mostly cool. Neutrals are 50-50 and warms tend to be more this than this. But this I pre-measured out for the 10 grams, and so you're gonna open these up and you're gonna pour them right into one of these jars. Pick, pick whichever one you want. So you're gonna pour both of these into those jars. Put your gloves on. Oh. Glove, glove, gloves. Do you wanna wear the mask too? <clears throat> you look so pretty. Sure, let's put the mask on. <laughs> 
This is the mask that I wear. I was telling Alfonso I look like a coal miner because I've got this big stained apron and gloves and then this pretty mask that I wear all the time. Oh, this is an OSHA approved mask for fine dust particles down to like, I think it's 0 .002 mesh or something like that. So you look gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Alright, so you got your gloves on. I'm going to open <laughs> these for you. Now. That's alright. You don't do this every day like I do. And then you're going to just pour both of these right into the jar. Oh. oh, that's okay. And I have more gloves. I'm sorry, I bought small. I have small hands. Okay. Uh, just pour it right in yeah, there. Yeah. Okay, and you can take that off if you need to talk. And then we're going to pour this one right in too. So this is 10 total grams, which again, normally I would weigh out, but I pre-weighed everything so we can move quickly. Nope, don't put the cap on. This is my cool color grind, like I said, which is a combination of all three of these. And it's just in different proportions based on what suits certain skin tones. And then this is my warm, and you can see there's more of this than there is of this, because this we're going to make my, my skin tone right here. Okay, and now you're going to screw the cover on, and you can see it's got grinder blades. This is going to get loud, too. Okay. You may have to edit this out. And you're going to pop it right in here, and we're going to grind for 40 seconds. I usually take it out halfway, and we're going to just tap it down, only because it can get caught up in the blades, and we want no white particles left. And I brought my little grinders, too. I have bigger grinders. And then we're going to see. You can see. When you pour it out, there's your foundation color. And you can see it looks, you know, just like skin tone. There. And then this gets packaged right into these jars right here. This is something that sets my company apart from a lot of other companies as well because nobody really offers this. One of the things I did when creating my bases is that I made them both what's called hydrophobic and hydrophilic, mm -hmm. meaning that they're both oil and water resistant but miscible. So they can actually be mixed into, you know, if you want to take my foundation, you can mix it into, say, my moisture spray. That's how I actually airbrush it, but you can also use it like a liquid makeup. You can set it with a moisture spray or a warm, wet washcloth if it's feeling a little powdery. Um, dry skin people do tend to like that. But you can also mix it into this, which is my uncolored cream base. So it comes just like that, no color to it whatsoever. You can mix any product into it and you instantly have a cream base makeup. So you can have cream foundation, cream concealer, cream blush, cream eyeshadow. Almost all of my blushes also, such as this one, mix it in here and you can use it as a lipstick too which is really nice. So they're kind of customizable um, because this is how makeup artists work. We want stuff that can multitask. We want it to be used. Anything I have can be used as an eyeshadow. You have any cheek color because I don't use dyes. Therefore, everything is allowed on your eyes. So if you have a cheek color and you're like, hey, I want to use that as an eyeshadow, go right ahead. Because wow. it's safe. Yeah. No dyes means oh, everything's eye safe, which is really, really true. So we're going to make something. Yes? Okay. yes. All right. So I brought my little, my little mini scale. We're going to turn it on. I always use little pieces of paper. I go and get them and, and recycle them when I'm done. We're going to make an eyeshadow. So I pre-measured this out in a little mini, mini amount. We're going to do two grams. And we're going to put this out on here. So you're going to see. All right, so we've got two grams in here. And now you're going to pick. We're going to do something like this. We want to do like a coppery color. And we're going to do an eyeshadow. But remember how I talked about adhesion? This mica has absolutely no adhesion. It looks glittery, it looks pretty, but it has no adhesion whatsoever. So just using this alone isn't really gonna make an eyeshadow that has a lot of color to it. So I'm gonna have you add a little, we're gonna do it first because I actually wanna show you how it's really not gonna change the whiteness too, too much. All right, so you're gonna take this and you're gonna just scoop some out in small amounts, okay? Where am I scooping it in? Yeah, right in there. In here? here? Nope, right oh. onto there. Because we have to weigh everything. Everything gets weighed and then it gets written down. All right, go ahead, put it on there. Let's see how much it weighs. Well, that is really glittery. It is really glittery. All right, so it weighs. 
0.39, so it's just under 0.4, so it's not even half a gram at this point. We're going to add this, and it looks like a lot. It looks like a big pile as opposed to the amount we're using in here. Mm -hmm. But when you grind it up, you're going to see that it's not really going to make change the color that much at all. Now you can see it's kind of going to be like this light, very light, peachy, almost pink color. And we're going to put some on here. You rub it down. It's still very, very pale. It's not going to give you a lot of color. It's almost like a pastel. What we need to do is we actually need to grind a base for this first. So you look at this, you figure kind of where it is on the color wheel, and that's where colors like this come in. These are the oxides. Here's a brown oxide. This is red oxide, red shade. This is more yellow oxide. Here's a black oxide. And this, this is carmine. And people, some people like carmine, some people don't like carmine. I like carmine. Carmine is called cochineal, and this is actually from the carapace of a beetle. This is what makes this bright pink coloring. I cannot make my bright pinks and whatever without it, without using dyes. I personally think carmine, bad for beetles, dyes, bad for people. So I err on the and side of bug, so. This has been around for thousands of years. This was the first pink food coloring. It's still in your food products today. It's, uh, wow. yeah. Yes. So and not all that. It is still, yes, it's completely edible, it's cosmetic safe, it's food safe, so yes. Um, so we're going to add a little bit of these colorants to actually give a base color, and then you layer the sparkly stuff over that. But okay. these are what's really giving you your impact color if you want to make a darker color. So let's add a little bit more. So let's turn this back on. And then why don't we add a little bit of red. So go in, and they all have spoons in them. So you can take a little. These are very strong. You do not need a lot. So take a teeny tiny oh, amount. I thought you were breathing it in. No, don't breathe it in. But <laughs> that's way, don't breathe it in. Like, but no, nope, that's way too much. I'm going to show you. Okay. Let me show you the first one. It's very, very strong. Look at it's not even registering on here. It's probably 0 .03 hundredths of a gram. All right, so we're going to put it in here. And then we're going to add a little bit of yellow, too. Right. Yellow is less strong. Red is the strongest pigment that there is. Yellow is probably uh, less by about half. So we're going to use a little bit more of that red peach. And yellow doesn't weigh as much as red either. That's why everything has to be weighed. You can't do it by teaspoonful or mm -hmm. by volume because red weighs a lot more molecularly than the yellow does as well. Um, the carmine weighs very little in comparison to all of them. So even to get like say point. 0 0.10 grams, you're using, you know, about that much wow. of the carmine to get it up to. So everything has to be weighed and everything needs to be recorded every single time. You can't remake a recipe. Then everything gets converted into percentages as well. There's a lot of math involved in doing this as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I'm not a math person at all. No. All right. So let's try that and see where we go. And you're going to see it's going to look a lot peachier. A lot peachier. And then when we drag it down, you're going to see there's going to be a lot more color to it. And it's still very light. You can see how much pigmentation you actually need to add in order to get a significant amount of color. You do it on white paper so that you can actually see what the color looks like. And you can see how much darker that is than what we have here for a drawdown. And then you just keep building pigment, you keep adding pigments in, you know, incremental amounts, recording it every time until you get to the color that you want. And this is how you continue to formulate. Well, I learned a, <laughs> a lot. Probably more uh, than you ever wanted to know about makeup or need to know. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but I mean, in general, like, the science of it all, I didn't know half of the stuff that went into Honestly, that went into it. Yeah, that's why there's a whole, I mean, there is a whole science of cosmetic chemistry because there's so much that goes into it. And what I'm doing is really just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, people who are working for the bigger cosmetic companies, I mean, they're in a laboratory every day trying to come with, up with the newest, latest, greatest youth, youthening agent, whatever that's coming out there, youth cocktail. 
Um, my philosophy is just a little bit different. Like I believe you can mix the science and have the have the science and know what's working for you, but kind of temper it a little bit with you know what has been in existence for centuries. It's time tested to be proven safe. It's time tested to be proven effective. You know, you just have to have things in the proper proportion, and that's one of the things that really took me the longest. I, my first form, uh, foundation, it took me one year of formulating to get a base foundation that was good enough to hand to somebody and say, can you test this for me? Wow. That's how hard I had to work on this and how long I had to work on it. It's not an overnight process. Yeah. You know, it is a long, a long process. There's nobody to, you know, you can't copy formulas. You can't, there, there, it just, it's not, it doesn't work that way. So it is a long process to do, but I personally think it's very rewarding. I'm very, very proud of, of what I've come up with. Oh. Carrie, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Uh, again, what is the website if they want to go get more information? It's www.fortunatefaceminerals.com. And also they can find me on Facebook. I'm actually running a contest right now too to get to 500 likes and I will be giving away a full kit of makeup actually too. Oh. So you want to go participate in that. Plus you'll also get to see new colors, new everything. Um, I, current, I have contests a lot of times where people can help me name a color, which is a lot of fun. Ooh. So yeah, and then you win that color if you uh, choose your name. So uh -huh. yeah. Well, again, thank you so much and we will be right back.